Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a speed reviews. I haven't done one of these in quite a while, but this is going to be my biggest speed reviews ever. I went back through my videos over the last few months and made a list of all the makeup that I purchased and have been trying and we're going to go through everything today and I'll give you my thoughts. We're going to talk foundation, concealer, blush, eyeshadow, everything. I'm excited to share all my thoughts with you and if you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty content here on YouTube three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you'll subscribe and let's get into it. All right, we have a lot of makeup to go over, so this will be a longer video. So you may wanna watch it in different parts or grab a snack or a cup of coffee because we got a lot of stuff to go through. Let's start with primer. I only have one, so this will be an easy product to start with. This is really the only primer I've purchased really recently. This is the Shiseido Synchro Skin soft blurring primer. I do have this on today. This is a pretty new purchase for me, but I do feel I've used it enough to kind of know what my thoughts are on it. This is a really nice primer. One thing I really like so far is that I've used it with a bunch of different base products and I've had no trouble with any of them in terms of pilling, things like that. This is a bit of, I don't know that I would call it blurring. They call it soft blurring primer. I do think it very slightly smooths over your skin. So if you have a little bit of texture or maybe you're just worried about pores in a certain area, this might be a great option for you. I really like it right here in my T-zone, particularly on the side of my nose. That's where I notice my pores the most. I do think it helps with that. It definitely does provide a little bit of a smoothing quality. I don't know if you have really oily skin and you have a lot of texture, breakouts, a lot of issues with pores, things like that. I don't know that this is going to be the most blurring primer that you could get. I would probably go for something more like the Tarte Pore Smoothing Primer or something like that. This is nice, I would say, for normal dry skin, maybe not enough for oily skin, but I will say I have really been enjoying All right, let's talk about foundations. I've tried quite a few foundations and skin tints over the last few months. That's one of my weaknesses, so I find I'm always testing quite a few foundations and concealers. That's just, I just can't resist them. So we'll start with one of my favorites that I've tried and the one that I have on today. This from Glossier, this is the Stretch Foundation. I use the shade Light Number 2, and I have to say, I am so impressed with this product. I really didn't have super high hopes for it. Glossier, I like the brand. I don't love a ton of their products, but I like them. Just not a brand that I love, like everything that they do. And this surprised me. This is a very nice, light, medium coverage natural finish foundation. I don't think you can get true medium coverage from this. I still think it's more on the light medium side, a little bit more than light, not quite medium. And I love the finish on this because it is truly a natural finish. So it's right in between matte and glowy. It's a little bit glowy, but it also has a bit of a, a matte finish to it as well. So I would say it falls right in between and it works beautifully with that Shiseido primer. But I find I just love how this looks on my skin. It looks natural. It does not look like makeup, but it does provide a decent amount of coverage. I love to use this with a fuller coverage concealer in areas where I need more coverage. And the times I've worn this, it's worn beautifully on me. I have no issues with wear. I think it's a great product. It is a bit on the thicker side in terms of consistency. So some people don't love a thicker feeling foundation just based on applying it. So if you don't like that, you might not love this one. I personally thought it was gonna be a little bit runnier of a texture, but it's not. It's on the thicker side, but when you blend it in, it's beautiful. I love how it looks today and I've loved it every day that I've worn it. I also tried this one from MAC. This is the new Studio Radiance Serum Powered Foundation. 
I will list all the shades that I wear in these products in the description box. I may forget to say each shade for every product we talk about, but I have NC17 in this. It is too dark. If you use me as a shade reference, definitely go lighter in this than you think you might because it, it definitely runs dark for sure. This is too dark. I have to use self tan to be able to wear this. So for that reason, I haven't worn it as much as I have some of these other foundations, but I will say I like this. It has not blown me away. I find it to be a little bit too glowy. It, if you have dry skin and you're looking for that super radiant, dewy finish, you will probably really like this. I will say the coverage on this, I would say is medium. No more than medium, but I do think it's a bit more than the Glossier foundation. If you have oily skin, I would say probably stay away from this one. It's It's got a lot of skincare in it from what I've read about it, and you can see that on your skin. So I like it. I don't love it. I might feel differently if I got a shade that's a little bit better for me, but I don't know. I do feel I'm definitely gravitating more towards the Glossier foundation, but I think this is nice. Probably better though if you have a drier skin type. Let's talk about a few skin tints. So I have three of them here. We have Hourglass, Danessa Myricks and CL. Let's start with the one that I like the most by far, and it's this one. You guys, this is beautiful. If you want a light coverage, I would say almost light medium with this, honestly. You like something pretty thin and lightweight feeling on your skin, with SPF 50, this is it. This is it. This, in my opinion, is a better version of the Ilia True Serum Skin Tint. Is that what it's called? Remember when that was really popular a few years ago? This is that, but better to me. There is no scent. The Ilia has a strange scent that I'm not crazy about. It's SPF 50, and this wears beautifully for a skin tint. I've been really liking this, actually, with this powder from Makeup Forever, the HD Velvet Powder. I pair these two together a lot and I love it. This is pretty dewy. So if you don't like that, you might not love this or you'll just have to use more of a mattifying powder with it. But by far of the skin tints I've tried this year, this one is my favorite. I wear light number three and it's a perfect shade match for me. Now, I also tried Hourglass and Danessa Myricks. You guys, I have to say, and this is kind of, I think, an unpopular opinion, but I'm not crazy about this. The main reason behind it is it's too hydrating. It's too hydrating. It's too much on my skin, and it gives no coverage. To me, this is like a moisturizer, a really thick moisturizer with a little bit of pigment mixed in, like I'm talking a little bit. If you have pretty even skin, but your skin is dry and you want just a little something, you might really love this. But I would not repurchase it. It just doesn't do enough. It doesn't do enough and I don't love how it looks enough to say I recommend this. Unless you have really dry skin and you're looking for little to no coverage. The last skin tint is Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin. This I like, however, I will say I thought I was gonna like it a little bit more then I like it. I thought this was gonna have a bit more coverage than it has. I find this is very light coverage. I don't even think you can get light medium from this. Maybe if you applied a lot of it, you could, but I've heard that over and over, that this has a good bit of coverage. I didn't experience that, and to me, for the amount of glow that you get with this, I would go with the CL for sure. Coverage is better, the shade is better for me, and you get SPF 50. You don't get any of that in here. So this is nice, but again, not my absolute favorite. Honestly, I like this just as much, and this is a lot cheaper than this. The Maybelline Superstay Skin Tint, this I would say is kind of similar to this, honestly. So of the two, I'd probably pick this one. And we'll finish up with two stick foundations the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick. I put this off for so long. because Number one, I couldn't figure out my shade. 
I finally figured out my shade. It is 1.5 cream. I put this off for so long trying it again because it is so expensive, but I'm here to tell you and I'm sorry to tell you to me this is worth this is worth it. Is this is a beautiful foundation. This is I would say a natural finish again, which is what I really like. Medium coverage. Maybe you could build it up slightly, but I would say it's a true medium coverage and it is just such a beautiful finish on the skin. Every time I've worn this, I just love how it looks on my skin. It wears beautifully and I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so happy to have it in my correct shade now. Sadly, I do recommend this. I really, really like it. I also think either dry or oily skin types would like that because it falls so uh, in between in terms of the finish. And lastly, the Fenty Blur Stick, the Eavesdrop Blur Stick. I absolutely love the original Eavesdrop, so I was excited to try out the stick. I love the stick as well. I will say I prefer the original Eavesdrop. I like the finish of that a little bit better. The original Eavesdrop is a bit more of a soft, I would say like a satin finish. This is pretty hydrating, very creamy. So I think if you have really dry skin, I would go with the stick. If you have more oily skin, I would probably go with the original Ease Drop from Fenty. And then if you're normal like me, I would say you could do either one. It just kind of depends on preference. I, if I had to pick, I would still pick the original one, but I do think this is nice and I also think it wears well. All right, let's chat about concealer. I know this is probably one of the ones y'all are waiting on. So we have the Gucci concealer, Mega by Mario concealer, Tower 28, House Labs, and Natasha Denona. Let's start with the one that I like the most out of the very new launches. So I'm mainly talking about these. Out of these, so Tower 28, Makeup by Mario, Gucci, and House Labs. I like the House Labs the best. This is the one that I have on today. I wear shade 11. This is, I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of. It is not similar really at all to any of these other ones. It's a pretty thick formula, but it is very hydrating on your under eyes. And this, on me, wears beautifully under the eyes. Now, you don't get full, full coverage from this. I will say that. I would say you're kind of between medium and full at the most. It is a beautiful concealer, though, in my opinion. I find, although it's hydrating, it does not crease badly on me, which there's another one of these concealers that is also very hydrating but it creases it's it's a creasy concealer on me this one is my favorite uh the only thing i'm not crazy about with this is i don't love for some reason the applicator it's really tight and when you finally pull it out it's kind of hard to get it back in you have to like shove it back in for some reason so i'm not crazy about that but i really enjoy this this is what i have on today and it's my favorite of the newer concealers. However, it's not my favorite of all. We'll get to that in a minute. You probably know what it is. The concealer I was referring to that creases too much is this one. This makes me sad because I really wanted to tell you that this is fantastic. And I will say it is pretty when you first apply it. I love how it looks, but this creases so badly. This looks good under my eyes for about 30 minutes and then Throughout the day, you guys, it gets into every little tiny fine line on me. And I don't have a ton of fine lines under my eyes. But I do, I mean, I'm 31. I do have some really close to my lash line. This gets right in there very, very quickly. I also find the coverage is not great on this. I don't think you even get a medium coverage from these. And I find even if you set this concealer with powder. Even the powder doesn't keep it from creasing. I find the powder also looks kind of creased over the top of this when I use it. Now I know a lot of people like this. I do think it's nice on your skin just as coverage, like if you wanted to use it as foundation. But in terms of under eyes, I'm not a huge fan of this one, sadly, after wearing it for quite a bit. 
Then we have Makeup by Mario. Now, this is okay. I don't dislike it, but I certainly don't love it. My main issue with this, two things. The shade range is not great on this to me, which is kind of surprising considering it came from Mario. I would think he would have a very extensive shade range and I find particularly in the lighter shades, they're really light and then they get pretty dark. I feel like we missed the light skin tones and to me, this is a fair color. This is 160 and this is the best match for my skin, but it's too light. It's too light under my eyes. I usually want to mix it with something else. But my main thing with this is it can be a little bit drying. It can definitely be a little bit drying. So if you have, if you struggle with dryness under the eyes, I would skip this one. I would not go for this. If you're going to use it and you struggle with dryness, make sure to really hydrate under your eyes beforehand. One thing that is nice about this is they are telling the truth when they say you don't have to set this with powder. It does set itself down which is nice. Um, but for the shade and the fact that sometimes I do think it can look a little bit dry, especially if you apply a, a good bit of it, it's not my favorite. I would choose House Labs over this. And then last but not least, the Gucci concealer. This is the newest one to me, so I've had the least amount of time with this. I would say this is a better version of this. This is pretty light coverage as well. I don't know that you even get a true medium coverage from this. It's very thin and hydrating, but this does not crease even close to as bad as this under my eyes. So for that reason alone, I would definitely choose this over this. I don't have a perfect shade for me. This shade is actually a little bit dark, but I like this concealer enough. I did actually order a lighter shade. To use with this. It's just not a ton of coverage, which is not always my favorite. It kind of depends on the day, but it is nice. And it, again, it wears beautifully. It wears like the house labs. It just doesn't have as much coverage. The last thing I want to say about concealer is none of these are as good as this. None of them. And I feel like people are really getting on the bandwagon with this lately. And I have to say it's justified. This is one of those things that it's starting to really get hyped. A lot of people are starting to recommend this and I'm here to tell you I agree. I think it is 110% worth the hype and the money. I have shade N2. This is what I use the most. I can use this on my face or under my eyes. I also have RN3 for under my eyes. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit more of a pinky undertone, but I mean, I could go on and on about this, but the shade range alone on this, I mean, the rest of these can't hold a candlestick to this. The coverage is impeccable, but it is a thin formula. It's not a thick texture. It is so pigmented with just the smallest bit of product. I absolutely love this all over my face, not just under my eyes. I also love to pair these two together, the Makeup Forever powder with this. Match made in heaven, I'm telling you. This is long wearing. I mean, I can't say enough good things. I'll shut up about it now, but in my opinion, it's the best by far. Moving along to powders. I only have two here. One is new, one is not really a new launch. It's just new to me. We'll start with the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch, the pressed powder. This is also pretty new to me, but I do feel like I've used it enough to decide if I like it. And I actually like this powder. I think I'm definitely in the minority there. I do find if you apply a lot of it, I can see where it does start to look a bit heavy in areas. So I would be a little bit cautious when applying this. I did use this today, but just under my eyes, I used it over the top of that House Labs concealer, and I used it with a puff. I do find, for whatever reason, I like this formula a little bit better with a puff more than a brush. I'm not really sure why. I have the shade Pound Cake in this one, and so far I like it. I just think maybe be a little bit lighter handed than you normally would be with a powder, but I have been enjoying it so far. However, the powder that stands out the most is this one. I cannot believe I've gone this long without this 
in my life. This Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder. Martina Lily told me to buy this and I'm so glad that she did because this is fantastic. I have the shade 1N10 and you guys, this is such a great product. You can wear this alone as powder foundation, obviously, but what I love to do with this is wear it on top of products that have a lighter coverage. So like something like this, the CL Skin Tint, with this kind of tapped lightly over the top, beautiful. Or the Natasha Concealer with the powder over the top, so good. It is mattifying, but not to the point where your skin looks flat. It just kind of tones down the glow, but not in a bad way, just enough. And it adds a little bit more coverage. So I can't recommend this enough. Honestly, I wasn't really sure how I was gonna feel about this. I actually don't love the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation, but I love this powder. I only have one bronzer to talk about. And it's this one from Fenty. This is the Sunstalker Powder Bronzer in the shade 01 Into Sun. This, I will say, I love the formula on this, you guys. This is super nice. The color on me, you'll probably see in the B-roll here. It shows up, but it's a very subtle bronzer. But for that reason, I do find I can just kind of not worry about anything at all when I'm applying this. I do think if you're any darker than me, this is this color is definitely not gonna be dark enough for you. If you are very fair, like more fair than me, I bet this would be a perfect bronzer on you. My favorite thing about it is how neutral the color is on this. I wish all the shades from these bronzers were more neutral, but I do find when you go up to the next one, it gets quite dark, quite a bit darker and quite warm. So I wish this was just like a hair darker, but honestly, I've really been liking it and I am happy to have a powder bronzer that I can just kind of apply and not worry about going overboard. I've been enjoying it so far. Moving on to another one of my favorites, blush. We'll start with the blush I have on today. This is probably my favorite blush that I've purchased. It probably will not come as a shock, but this blush from Patrick Ta in the shade She's Wanted. I um, I was so close to not buying this because I was afraid it was going to be too dark, too much, could not make it work. No, I was wrong. I was so wrong. This is the most beautiful, rich berry color, and I don't have anything like it in my collection. It is so pretty. It is very pigmented, so when you use it, you really need to like tap in one time and then maybe tap it off on your hand and then go on your skin. You don't wanna get a lot of product built up with this shade, especially if you are fair, light, light, medium, because it does, it's very pigmented. Very, very pigmented, so you don't need a lot of this, but I, I absolutely love the color of this. So beautiful, so unique. You know how I feel about Patrick Ta blushes, so I won't go on too long, but I'm so happy that I picked up that shade. I've also gotten the Patrick Ta palette, the holiday palette. I think, I don't think this is even available anymore, but in case you were wondering, I really like this. However, you, you do have to really like pink. That's the thing with this palette. I mean, look at it. It's bright, vibrant, fuchsia pink, and you have to like that color. I personally do like pink. I love a pink blush, so for me, I love this light pink in here. I can make this brighter one work. It's very pigmented though, so I do have to be really careful, but I really like them best kind of mixed, a little bit of both. I really like it, but again, you have to like pink blush. And then this year he did include the four glitter toppers in here. I really like that they did something different. I like these glitter toppers. I think they're nice. The times I've used them, I personally didn't even find they had that much fallout, which is surprising based on how glittery they are. But I don't know because they're in a blush palette. I don't know how much use I will get out of them, just being totally honest. 
I buy the Patrick Ta palettes no matter what because I love him and I love that brand. So I will buy them no matter what. But, you know, practically speaking, am I going to use this a ton? Probably not. But do I regret buying it? No. Because, like I said, I love Patrick Ta. But I don't know. I think, I hope next year maybe he'll do all blushes again or he could maybe do blush bronzer and highlight instead i don't know but overall i do like this i don't know how much use i will continue to get out of it though i also bought this blush from dior this is the rosy glow blush in rosewood i these came out earlier this year when dior kind of rebranded redid a lot of their formulas and they re-released new colors and these blushes. I knew I wanted this one. I don't know why it took me so long to buy it. I love the color of this. This is the perfect rose. Rose nude. It's The shade is perfection. Don't let the swatches scare you because they do not swatch well at all. They swatch very, very weak. But when you put them on, they are beautiful. One thing I will say about this is... On me, it looks pretty true to how it looks in the pan. I have seen it on other people where it does look a bit different and it is more of a pH adjusting blush. So just know that when you see people using it, it might look a little bit different on you, but I love it. I really enjoy it. In fact, I actually added a little tiny bit of this blush today over the Patrick Ta she's wanted, but not very much at all. But do I regret this? No, absolutely not. I also have a newer shade to me in the Gucci blushes. These are the Luminous Matte blushes. And that's exactly how I would describe them. I Well, you know what, actually, I would say, I don't know how matte this is. I mean, it definitely has a little bit of sheen to it, but it's also very silky and velvety. So I guess that's where they're getting that from. But I love this shade in Rosy Beige because it's very nude with just the slightest bit of a rose undertone, but it's pretty nude, so it goes with most things. I bought it honestly because I wanted this color. I don't have a ton of super neutral, more nude blushes, and I love the packaging. Is it expensive for a blush? Yes, it is very expensive. Do you have to spend this much on a Gucci, Gucci blush? Absolutely not. However, I think if you are wanting to splurge on something, this is a really nice formula. And finally, I do have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Blush and Glow Glide Palette. So this came out with her holiday collection this year. And this is one of two shades. There is a darker shade as well. I personally really like this, especially this highlighter. This highlighter is very, very different. It's creamy. It's very almost... I don't even know. I'm not describing this well, and you probably can't see it there, but I find this highlighter to be pretty natural looking on the skin. It almost looks a bit like a cream highlighter when you apply it to me. And the blush is nice. I will say it's kind of a, it's a very finely milled blush, and it does have a quite a bit of kick up when you put your brush in it. So I do find I like to kind of tap it off a little bit on my hand before going in on my skin. Sometimes when you have blushes like that where you get a lot of pickup with your brush, if you don't kind of tap it off, sometimes they can go on a little bit patchy. And I do find if I use a lot of this without kind of tapping it off a little bit, that can happen. I think it's $29 for this and I feel like it'd be a great gift for somebody. If you know someone that loves Charlotte Tilbury, this would be a nice Christmas gift. Moving on to highlight, I have two of them. First one is the new one from Anastasia. This is the Glow Seeker Highlighter in Sun Idol. This is, I really, I really do like this highlight. This is what I have on today. I do think this is similar to the Omrizi highlighter, which I know that's what a lot of people have been saying. 
If you've been on YouTube for a while watching beauty videos, you know the Omrezi highlighter that was very popular a while ago. This is similar, but it is warmer. The Omrezi one is a little bit more cool toned, but the formula, very, very similar. And I do find this is very intense but I actually think it goes on, not natural, because highlighter usually doesn't look natural, but it's not super glittery, like big particles and look super fake on your skin. I feel like it really does blend in well to your skin. So I really like it. I'm glad I bought this. I don't love the packaging. I feel like it's heavy and nice, but I don't love how bulky it is, but I do like how it looks on my skin. And then the other one that I bought is the Diamond Bomb from Fenty. If you saw my Sephora haul where I showed this, I have wanted this for the longest time. The longest time. And I am very happy that I bought this. The only thing I will say about this is the other day, I've mainly been using this on my eyes as a topper. And that's kind of why I bought it in the first place. I wanted it just to top eyeshadow like a single shadow top a little bit of this on the top to get that wet look that's really what I bought it for the other day I did apply a little bit of it on my cheeks just to see what it looks like and if you do that just remember this does have glitter particles in it so they can kind of fall on the rest of your face if you're not really careful when you're applying it as a highlighter it it does, if you look up close, it looks like glitter on your face. So just keep that in mind if you use it that way. I personally will probably use it more on my eyes. Also think it would be really pretty, and I've seen a few makeup artists doing this on like your collarbone. If you were doing, I don't know, if you were going somewhere fancy or maybe you were wearing something where your chest is more exposed, I think it'd be really pretty for that. But it does have fallout and you can see big chunks of glitter on your face. So just keep that in mind, but I do love it as an eye topper. Moving on to brows, I only have two brow products. Um, the first you've seen in tons of videos at this point, and I haven't even had it for that long. This brow powder from Anastasia, you guys, this is holy grail for me already. I am literally obsessed with this product. I cannot and I don't want to use anything else in my brows right now. This is what I have on today with a clear brow gel and this is just how I like my brows to look. I love and I wish I knew this sooner. I love the look of a shadow or a powder in my brows. I just find I love how soft and pretty it looks and I love this. So this is a very old product. I have just never personally tried it until recently, but yes, I am thoroughly enjoying this and I feel this will be a staple for me in my makeup collection for a long time. The only other brow product I purchased recently is this from Kosas. This is their new Ultra Fine Brow Nano, Brow Pop Nano Pencil. I bought this because I was curious I've never tried Kosas brow products before and I've seen a lot of people raving about this because it is so small. Do you see how tiny the tip of this is? I like this, but I don't think you need to spend the money on it. I really don't. I find there are so many amazing, affordable brow pencils. And you know, sometimes it's not about the pencil so much as it is the color. To me, color with brow is the most important thing. So regardless of brand, I find whichever brand has your perfect brow color, I think you should go with that. Hopefully it's drugstore to save some money. If it's not, then I can totally see why you would buy a more expensive product. But to me, this is fine. I like that it's a really fine tip, that's nice, but I think my NYX micro brow is just as good and I don't I don't think anything this is anything earth shattering personally. All right, moving on to eyeshadow. Let's chat about what is on my eyes today because this is a 100% love I am so happy that I bought these. These from YSL. I just 
This is everything I love in an eyeshadow. I love this formula so much. It is the most creamy, blendable, buttery looking eyeshadow. I, I love it. The one I have on today is number one. That happens to me every time. Number 100, Stora Dolls. This was actually my first time using this color story today and it did not disappoint me. Mine did come not broken, but the pan is not, the glue, I guess, came unstuck in mine. So my pan, if I turn it over, will fall out. I need to glue it back. I just haven't gotten around to getting some uh, Gorilla Glue to do that. But 10 out of 10 for the packaging. 10 out of 10 for the formula, the color story, this beautiful gray, smoky, taupey color story. I love it. All of these shadows though, even, yeah, even the dark brown in here, all of these shadows have a little bit of shimmer in them. So just keep that in mind. This one is the most matte, the dark brown. But if you look really close, I do think there's just a little bit of shimmer in these formulas. The brown is pretty close to a true matte though, but just keep that in mind. I will say because the, the other shades have a good bit of shimmer in them, this one here that's the topper, I did get a little bit of fallout with that shade. So maybe do your eyes first or spray your brush if that bothers you, but other than that, I mean, how pretty are these just to look at? I may or may not have purchased a third one that's not here yet. Okay, let's move on to a palette that really disappointed me. I really wanted to love this, but I just don't. I just don't, you guys, I, I just don't. This palette from Kosas, this is the Undressed palette. I was so excited to see this. First of all, Kosas has never done an eyeshadow palette before. This is a palette of eight neutrals, which if you know me, you know I am all about the neutrals. I am all about palettes that appear boring to a lot of people. That is what I love more than anything. So I was really excited to try this. <sighs> you guys, this is just not it. This is just not it. Eight shadows, $40. Yes, it is talc free. I know a lot of people really are going away from talc right now. So it has that going for it if that is something that bothers you. But these are just not great. They're just not great. You get one metallic in here and first of all it's kind of hard and gritty feeling when you dig your finger into it. And I mean this is what you get. That's it right there. And I kind of dug my finger. It's this. That's the Gucci blush right there. But like look at that. There is hardly anything there. And there's, I mean, it's certainly nothing special, certainly not worth $40. Yeah, the, the mattes in here are not terrible, but they're pretty powdery. They're very chunky. I don't know if you can even see it on my finger, but they kind of ball up a little bit when you put your finger or your brush in there. They do blend, but it's because they're so powdery. Like that's that gray shade right there. I don't know. And I'm kind of confused because when I looked on Sephora, this got a lot of really good reviews. So maybe I'm missing something, but based on the fact that this is still $40, it's the least expensive, I think, of all the palettes I'm going to talk about, but it's still $40. I feel like the quality could be better on this. Then of course we have Patrick Ta's Major Dimension 3 palette. I've used this quite a bit on my channel since I purchased it. This is his newest palette, his all matte palette. And again, okay, I believe this palette is $70, I want to say. The Kosas palette is $40. So yes, this is $30 more. This is $30 better quality. What, like 100%. I love that you get the two creams in here. You get a dark brown and a dark black cream that you can use as a base. You can use them as eyeliner and you get cool tones and warm tones in here. To me, of all the matte palettes I've tried since the beginning of my channel, this is the one. 
This is my favorite by far. I do love Patrick Ta, but I, the quality on this is impeccable. The blend, the shadows are, I mean, they blend themselves. You apply them and it takes little to no effort at all to blend. These, I mean, I can't recommend his palettes enough. If you don't have a good matte palette and you're looking to invest in a really good quality one, this is it. Then, of course, everyone is talking about this, and for good reason, the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. I absolutely love this. In fact, I was going to use this today, but then I was like, you know what? I've used this a ton. Let me use that Stora Dolls YSL since I haven't used that in a video yet, but I do absolutely adore this palette. I love every single shade in here. And for a palette that has 15 shades in it, that's saying a lot. I, I don't often love every single shade in a palette, but I love every single shade in here. Again, quality, 10 out of 10. I love these new, what are they called? Wet effect formulas. This pink called Mia right here and this kind of light nude color called Sheen right here. They are super thick thin glitter toppers that give you just a wet sheen to your eye. They look so pretty, honestly, just on their own, but they look beautiful tapped over any of the shades in here. And then probably my favorite shade in here is the one in the center, which is Muse. So beautiful. I mean, that is how you do a metallic shimmer shade there, okay? That is absolutely Stunning. I can't, I won't go on about it because I know everyone's talking about this palette. It's going to be in everyone's best of the year makeup video. I can guarantee it and it will be in mine too. All right, a few more palettes here. The Charlotte Tilbury Beautyverse palette. This uh, I bought with that blush and highlighter duo. This was her palette for the holiday season this year. If I can get it open. I personally really liked this. However, my favorite thing about it are these three. These three matte shades here are stunning, stunning. The formula honestly kind of reminds me of the YSL formula, but these are, I mean, even just swatching this, this is the most smooth, buttery, I feel like I use the same words, but I don't know how else to describe the, I mean, these are just impeccable. This light shade is such a good like one and done if you're around my skin tone. I love them. But obviously this is an expensive palette to buy it for three shades. I do like the glitter toppers in here. They do have a little bit of fallout, but again, with this type of shadow, I personally just kind of expect it. It really doesn't bother me very much, but if that bothers you, keep that in mind. I do find if you use your finger actually with this, I didn't get a ton of fallout that way. I actually got more fallout with a brush if I didn't spray the brush. So either spray or use your finger and just be careful. I wish instead of these two here, I feel like we only needed one of these. I would have loved to see a green in the place of one of these purples because to me, these two look very, very similar on the eyes. I, I, that's one thing I would definitely change about it. If you are wanting this formula here, her Super Nudes palette, it says online limited edition, but she's had it for a while now, so I'm thinking it's not limited edition. The palette, the Super Nudes, has six shades and the formula in there is this formula. In my opinion, she should make all her quads this formula. So if you're wanting that, maybe do the Super Nudes palette instead of this if you don't feel like you'll use the toppers. And finally, for palettes, this is the one I've used the least, so I can't say a ton about this. The Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette. I bought this out of pure curiosity, honestly. I kept seeing people using it. And I love the concept, I love, I don't have anything else like this. I have not given this the time to really tell you my true thoughts on it. What I can tell you is I love the formula, I love the pomades, these velvet pomades. They're probably my favorite of the two. 
I don't like the smell of this palette. I will say that. Like just now when I opened it up, I got a really strong whiff of the smell. What is the smell? Do you know what the smell is on this? I feel like it smells like polyurethane or something. I don't know. I don't love the smell. And I do find if you're going to use these on your face, the pans are a bit small for that. So those are kind of my negatives, I guess, overall at this point. But what I will say is I love how unique this is. The formulas are very nice. They're, the quality is there. I love how heavy and nice and weighty this, this palette feels. I am wanting to play with this more for my brows. I haven't figured out the exact brow combo in terms of the colors in here that I like on me, but I like it so far. I'll keep using it and update you in the future. And one more eyeshadow is the Merit. The Merit Solo Shadows. I have the shade Vachetta. I also have the shade Viper, which is the dark green. I have not even used Viper yet, so I can't speak to that, but I have used this one quite a bit, and I love this as a one and done shadow. I love to put this on my lid and the crease all over and that's it. Sometimes I'll throw a little bit of a powder bronzer over the top to kind of set it in place. I do find that these last well on me. I, I have found they can crease a little bit on me if I don't apply some sort of powder over the top. So if you have oily eyelids, either use a primer underneath and set it with some powder or at least don't prime and use powder over the top like a bronzer or something because I do find if you have oily eyelids a lot of the times your shadows will crease they do on me that's only the only part of my face that gets super oily would be my eyelids so that is one thing about these the other thing I do find these work the best just kind of on their own, maybe with a little bit of powder over the top, but I don't really love to build a lot of additional shadow on top of these. I feel like they shine the most, just like the name it says, solo shadows by themselves. I really like the color I have in Vachetta. It's a perfect warm brown, and I, I use this quite a bit. It's been sitting here on my desk since I got it really. I have two mascaras to talk about. The first is from Benefit. This is the mascara I have on today. This is the FanFest mascara. This is okay. Nothing great. I wouldn't buy it again. It's fine. I do find this one smudges on me just a little bit throughout the day. I will say as, I've, as I'm getting older, I'm noticing that more and more with a lot of mascaras. This I do think it smudges a little bit on me. So keep that in mind if you struggle with that. This one does do that on me. I also find this to be very difficult to remove, which is not a deal breaker for me because I have mascaras that I love that are also kind of hard to remove, like the YSL Lash Clash. That one is hard to remove, but I love it so much. I don't mind. I'll take it off. I don't love this one enough to warrant that, to buy it again. I think it's fine in terms of length. I don't think it does much for volume, um, and I do agree with the fan aspect. I do think it does a pretty good job of separating the lashes, kind of fanning them out, but overall, I don't love it. I like my e.l.f. Lash and Roll much, much more than this, and it's $6, so that's kind of my thought on that. And then the new Tower 28 in the new shade Drift, which is a brown. This I really like. I like this much more than that Benefit one. I do find this one can smudge sometimes. For some reason, this does not smudge on me all the time, but it smudges sometimes. And I can't figure out why it does sometimes and it doesn't other times. But this, I would say, is kind of a similar mascara to the Benefit, but this one is much better. The wand, they're both curved wands. You've probably seen this one, but the wand looks like this. And I really like this. However, I do wish it was more of a true brown. It's not really a brown, it's a black brown. So on the lashes, it's not quite as intense as black, but it's black brown. It's not true brown in my opinion. So that's one thing I would change about it. And I do find this does much more 
for my lashes in general than the Benefit. So of the two, I would definitely pick this one. However, I do prefer my e.l.f. Lash and Roll and my YSL Lash Class. All right, let's finish up with lip products. I do have a lot of lip products. I seem to always accumulate a lot of lip things as well. So um, the lip liners I have on today, these are new, but they're not a new product to me. I have so many of these, but these have been my two favorite lip liners recently. Hue from Makeup by Mario and Travis. Hue is what I have on the majority of my lips. Today, it's a really pretty pink, like a rosy pink. And then I have Travis, which is a little bit more kind of a mauve -y brown. So that's Travis and that is Hue. I use Travis in the center of my lips, so on the bottom and the top, and then I will take the lip brush and kind of blend them together. I do love the Makeup by Mario lip formula. They are very long lasting on me and I love these. So I do highly recommend those, any of the shades. Today I have on those lip liners, the Patrick Ta blush in She's Wanted, the cream. I added that. So this here with the lip liner and then on top I use this and these are great you guys. You need these if you like this type of product. The e.l.f. Glow Revival Lip Oil. These are fantastic. These are, this is the best drugstore lip oil I've tried, hands down. Over the CoverGirl, over the NYX, over the Milani. I like this one the best. This is very thin feeling on the lips, but it feels super hydrating and it has a really nice, subtle mint smell. I have two, my other one is in my purse. This one is Honey Talks and it's more of a nude, but this is what I have on over the top of that She's Wanted from Patrick Ta. But look, this color is so pretty too. That's it there, it doesn't have a ton of color, but it's a little bit of a brownie nude these are so nice these are better than the dior lip oils to me they smell better they're better they're better and these i think they're eight dollars a piece maybe six dollars a piece but yes highly highly recommend also have the in beauty project lip oil and cookie now this is they have very similar wands like this is the in beauty project wand. It's like a really small, fat little wand. This is a much thicker formula than the e.l.f. This is a little bit, it has a little bit more pigment and it's just thicker feeling on your lips. So if you like one better than the other, you might prefer one over the other. I bought this because it smells like cookies. This is Shade Cookie and I have a few other N Beauty Project lip oils and I like them. I don't really mind a thicker lip oil versus a thinner one. They're both very shiny. If I had to pick, honestly though, I'd still probably go with the e.l.f. But I bought this because it's cookie and I'm a cookie fanatic. So there you go. Then the Say, what are these called? Glossy Bounce Lip Oils. These are nice, much thinner in consistency than this. They don't have a smell. This is nice. There's nothing super special about this. I will say it's nice, it's glossy, feels nice, very thin feeling on the lips, but it doesn't really plump, doesn't have a smell. Um, it's nice, nothing special though. I love these, I have fallen in love with this, the Hourglass Phantom Glossy Balm. The one I use the most is this one, which is the shade Rise, which is a light kind of beigey pink. Okay, this I love. I I have worn this so much with these two lip liners from Makeup by Mario. These are very glossy, very, very glossy. And they have some color, but not a ton. Honestly, they are similar to the next product, which is the Revie Beauty Effortless Lips from Allie Glines. Very similar to this. I think these are a little bit shinier, and I think the Ally Glines, the Revy Beauty, I think those last a little bit longer than these on my lips. I like both though. I can't really tell you I don't like one because I like them all, but I have been reaching for the Hourglass a ton. And then Revy Beauty, the Effortless Lips. Where is my other one? I ordered all three colors. 
Um, these are very nice. What's unique about these is, like I said a minute ago, they are very long lasting for this type of product, like here. This will kind of give you an example. Okay, so this is Revy Beauty. This is Hourglass here. Do you see how much more shine this has? This is much shinier, much glossier. This has some, some shine to it. It's very hydrating, but it's definitely not on the level as this. So for that reason, I think that's probably why the Alley Glines Review Beauty wear a little bit better. They wear off evenly on your lips. I remember hearing her say she formulated them that way, and I would agree with that. They do wear off very gradually, but very evenly on your lips. So again, depending on what you're looking for, you might like one or the other. The one I just swatched is Dahlia, which is more of a rose color. That's the one that I wear the most of the three. All right, I think that is everything. I have, my throat's honestly kind of starting to hurt now because I've been talking for so long, but I hope this was helpful. I tried to include as much as I possibly could and tell you as much as I can without going on too, too long about these things, but I hope this was helpful. I love these kinds of videos. They do take me a while to be able to film them just because it takes me a while typically with most things to figure out truly how I feel about them. There's a few things in here that are newer that I feel pretty confident about already, but I like to really wait it out with most of my things and figure out what I really, really like and why and what I don't love as much. So I hope this was helpful for you. I will have all the products that I do like and I do recommend linked in the description box. They are affiliate links that support this channel if you use them, so thank you so much for doing that. It goes right back into this channel and my budget for buying new products, testing new things, updating my equipment, things like that. So thank you so much if you do support me or any other creator through their links. We really do appreciate it. I hope you'll subscribe if you have not already and follow me over on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1 and I will see you next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye.